So welcome. Thank you, everyone, for taking this time uh, to come in and listen to the presentation tonight on Michigan newspaper resources and more. Um, just, you know, really quick agenda tonight. What I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about some of the different newspaper resources at LM, the Library of Michigan. And then I'm going to go into kind of a demo to show you where that, if you're a Michigan resident, how to get a library card and how to navigate to the online resources that are available that are Michigan newspaper uh, related. And then um, we're going to open up to two questions from you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and click to the next slide. So what is the Library of Michigan? Well, as we can um, see here on the screen, you know, we are that institution to collect, preserve, and provide access to the story of the state, you know, that and to support libraries and their role as uh, community anchors. So there are three service populations that we librarians here at LM serve. Public libraries, researchers like yourself, whether it's in Michigan um, or elsewhere, and then state employees uh, help them to perform their job. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're sending us all your questions or, or calling us because there's few of us and many questions out there. But for us, the Library of Michigan, we've been around for quite a while, since 1828, during the territorial times, you know, we were a territorial library. And then, you know, in 1837, yay for statehood, we became that Michigan State Library. And then we packed up all of our bags and moved them in 1847 from Detroit over here, you know, without I-94, without 96. So that was quite a feat to do with about 100, and, what, 30, 135 volumes in our collection. Then in uh, 1847, I mean, not 1847, uh, 1983, through the Public Act 540, we became the Library of Michigan. Kind of helps distinguish us from Michigan State University Libraries, which is just down the road, about five or six miles from our building. And then in 1988, after moving around uh, throughout uh, the Lansing area in different buildings, we uh, are now in the building that you see in the picture on the bottom right-hand side of the slide. So in the building itself, if you haven't visited us, we do encourage you to you know, stop over and, and, and come visit us and do some research. We occupy the left side of that, that image with all the windows. It's the Library of Michigan, and we cover floors two, uh, three, and four. The fifth floor is the statewide services uh, librarians. On the second floor, it's mostly the Michigan collection. Um, on the third floor, there is the state law library and the general collection. On the fourth floor, there is the rare book room and the government documents and the bound general periodicals, things like life and time and so forth. At the Library of Michigan, we have four primary collections, the Michigan collection, the state documents collection, that law library collection, and the rare book room. But then, as I did mention, there are the federal documents and the main collection that kind of resides on both the third and fourth floor. The newspapers themselves, they're on the second. A lot of them are on the second floor. So newspapers at a glance. The Library of Michigan owns at least one newspaper on film from each county. And then, as I said, most of the collection is on microfilm. <sighs> Maybe about 70,000 reels of newspapers on microfilm. And that's just a lot. There are many cabinets on the second floor. Um, we do try to subscribe to as many current newspapers that we can find. And those are located on the third floor across from the law library on the south side of the third floor. Um, so we do our, our best to keep up the, subs the subscriptions, but as some of us know, some of the newspapers are moving just to digital access, which is uh, very disheartening as we're trying to keep and build our newspaper collection. And then lastly, some of our papers are accessible on the internet through a Library of Michigan library card that you can obtain if you are a Michigan resident. So just to reiterate, current papers are on the third floor, the microfilm room, 
where most of the newspapers are at. That's on the second floor south side of the building. And then you can access uh, some of the databases that cover some of the Michigan newspapers through Library of Michigan Computers, our patron network. So you can come into the building. We can get you signed onto a computer or some of them through remote login. So there are three ways to find a newspaper in at the Library of Michigan. AnswerCat, which is our online catalog, uh, the newspaper holdings list, and a third way. And I'll talk a little bit of, briefly about that third way in a little bit. So catalog, answercat.org. You know, you can search by title, keyword, subject. Um, and when you use, you know, subject searching or keyword searching, we do um, want to emphasize to to be consistent, you know, so that you're using things like MISH and periodicals or newspapers. So the example that I just typed up here, Lansing MISH newspapers or Lansing MISH periodicals. And the same thing if we're using the keyword of the catalog, you know, newspapers, periodicals, and the example I have here, Ingham County newspapers. So that you can try to get a good representative um, results list of what we have in our collection. This image here is the uh, and the, the front screen, that main search screen of our new catalog interface. And as you can see, you have that very clean line search box, which is the basic search. But then if you want to do like a subject search, um, you'd have to go to the advanced search option, which is right below that search box. And you can click on that and then you can choose to do a subject search, a title search, an author search, keyword, and so forth. And you can get to our catalog by going to answercat.org. I'm gonna to move to the next slide. Now in this results list that I have up here, what I did is I use Lansing Mish newspapers in the advanced search, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen. So, just to kind of give us a little familiarity on this uh, search window, the results list is in the center. As we can see, on the left hand side are several different limit menus that you can you know, manipulate the search. So, as we can see on the left hand side, find all my search terms right below it. As I said, it's Lansing Mish newspapers. That is the keyword or the, yeah, the keywords that I use, but I used a subject search to get this list of, as it says towards the top, like 334 items uh, in our catalog. And then there's a few other things to point out in this results list. In case you're not familiar with our new catalog, you can see it'll talk about a location from using this, this top results, it says Lansing Miscellaneous Newspaper. Underneath there, it says location, Lansing, uh, Library of Michigan, microfilm, newspapers, 2S, meaning second floor, south side. Um, if there is any more information below, you will see that show more option. You can click on it and you can get more information about what that title has. And you'll, I'll show you that in a few seconds here. Um, that second list in the results list, the Lansing Industrial News, just to point out that result list, that result item right there, if you see it says volume, um, it's, it's giving us an indication of what we've got, 1955, January 7th through 1957, December 27th. So sometimes you have an actual volume to kind of give you an indication of what we have. If you don't see any volume information, it either wasn't entered into the cataloging record a long time ago, or there's simply too much to put in there. And it's better to actually click on that title itself. So that above uh, result, the Lansing Miscellaneous Newspapers, there's probably too many newspapers in there to list volumes. So if we were to click on 
a newspaper in our catalog, a title like Lansing Journal, you're going to get the record will you know pop up, and then this is the uh, the record for the Lansing Journal. I just want to point out a, a few different things here in the record um, that it's important to to keep in mind. You know, you're going to have the publication date, you know, the language, some of the publication information, like who published it. This is Rowley um, editors. Um, towards the center of the record, you should see like a notes field. So we have here, it says you know, it's description based on number 307 and so on and so forth. Tell you about the microfilm and, and what about it. Now it's important to, to pay attention to the note field because if we learn anything important about the newspaper, like perhaps missing issues in this particular reel or this particular title, the notes field should list those important pieces of information. So two, uh, actually not two, one important example for those doing research into um, Detroit Free Press and the Detroit News, back in the 60s and I think in the early 70s, there were about two or three strikes. And in the notes field for those two papers, the News and the Free Press, it lists when those strikes were. And that will also tell you there are no papers for those dates for the news and the free press. They just simply weren't published. So if you're looking for that particular date, um, you will want to you know, email or call us to see if we can kind of brainstorm some ideas of what other papers you might want to look at because there's nothing there for the news or the free press. Also in the uh, record itself, if there are other titles that are known, we'll put those below the notes field. So we see that other titles, Lansing Journal, Lansing Mish 1887. So other titles will be placed there. Along with serial publication, do we know when it began, um, when it ended, the publication frequency and so forth. So if you were to click on one of those options that says show all, that I talked about a little bit ago, you might get a small list or you might get a huge list of show all, that is all the different reels. So what we can, what I wanna point out here, looking at that top item, microfilm newspapers to South, it tells us 1910, January 3rd through March 31st. Status library use only, it's, it's microfilm. And then the next one's 1903, January to April, and then 1908, and then 1909, 1888. So you can kind of see a little little pattern here of not in date order. The Library of Michigan has moved to a new catalog with Michigan State University. We moved to that new catalog back in late July, and that's one of the fixes that they are working on and hoping to correct in the next release of the catalog early next year to fix this. Um, alphabetical or this, this order for the volume. So that becomes much easier to do a quick scan to see what we have or to see what we don't have. So I do want to just to quickly point that out to you that when you look at any of the newspapers, you might right now have to do a little bit of digging to look line by line to see what we have, but we do know about it and it is being worked on. Well, not right now, but as we speak. So another way that you can find newspapers in our collection is using the holding list that we have on our website. And as it's mentioned here, it's arranged alphabetically by Michigan County, and then it's arranged alphabetically by town. And then finally, newspapers are listed by title and date, again, alphabetically. And to get to that, newspaper listing, and I'll show it to you during the demo, but I'll quickly just explain it in words. On the image below this slide, you'll see there's a little menu towards the top and one of the middle options says for the public. If you're to click for the public, a second menu will pop up on the left-hand side of your screen and one of the choices will be newspapers at the library. And within that choice, you can click on 
uh, I think it's newspapers on microfilm, and it will give you a county listing, which sort of looks like this, kind of a, a shortened, cropped down version. So that's the county list, alphabetical, as you can see. And then if you want to then go into to see what we have by county, or within the county, I should say, you click on the county, and then you're going to get an alphabetical list of the towns and cities, which is the example is that image on the right hand side, and that's Ingham County. And then within there, uh, you have the alphabetical listing of the newspapers below each of the city or town. So the few things to point out here, if you're using this method to see, kind of do some glancing and, and browsing of newspapers. So if we look at the first one, Dansville Herald, if you see any newspaper that simply mentions a year, like 1888, that's an indication that we either could have a full run of the year, we could have six months of the year, we could have one month, one week, or even one day. So if you see a heading like this, Danville Herald, it's good then to go back to the catalog once you know, oh, this is the title I want, search the title in the catalog, and then look in that notes field, because that should tell you we have maybe this month or these months or this one day. If we look at the listing under East Lansing, I want to point out one item here. Uh, East Lansing Town Courier, and then we jump two items down to the Town Courier. And if we look at the dates, the first one, East Lansing Town Courier, we've got 1962 to 74, and then Town Courier says 74 to 1991. In this newspaper holdings list, if you see very similar newspaper titles that have years that sort of go together, they might be book end years, that's a, a good indication that those papers are related in some fashion. And the name itself is fairly close, East Lansing Town Courier and the Town Courier. Um, so that's something just to keep in mind. If you look at this holding list and you see the numbers 999, nine, nine, so four nines, um, at the right-hand side of a year grouping like 1970 to 9999, that 9999 is an indication that we should still be receiving current copies of that newspaper. But again, always double check the actual catalog because newspapers are going out of print and it is a little challenging to, to keep up with all different changes. And then there's that third way with that darn construction barrel. So I apologize for the construction barrel. We have newspaper family histories. And what this, these are, are items that are, that librarians several decades ago created family trees of many newspapers to help show that relationship. You know, the, the subsequent name, you know, were there any mergers or buyouts of different newspapers? And while it does say, yes, it can be accessed from the answer record um, that you find, and look for that phrase, connect to newspapers publishing history. But as we've migrated to uh, that new catalog, that's still one of those items that's under construction. So um, that hopefully will be coming in the new year in 2023 at some point. So just kind of keep in mind that, you know, do definitely click on it, but no, for right now, it's not a function that is on there, but it will be a useful function once it is working. So I wanted to put this here, accessing newspapers. Um, you know, for those of you who want to decide to come in and, and do some of the research here, because uh, there's some good things to point out. Uh, newspapers on film are organized alphabetically by town and then by title, and then chronologically by date. So key point, title changes often cause dates in the film drawers to jump around. And here's one of the best examples that we can give. So if we look in the left column, towards the middle bottom, there's Lansing State Journal, Lansing State Republican. If we then move over to the right side column and we look at Lansing Journal, or not the Lansing Journal, the State Journal, 1911, and then the State Journal, and then right below it, the State Republican. Well, the State Republican is the original title of the Lansing State Journal, which happens to be 
the first one listed in that image on the left-hand side when I mentioned Lansing State Journal and then the Lansing State Republican. So there's something to keep in mind when you're looking at the film cabinets themselves and finding reels. That name of the paper will influence where it's at in the drawer. So if you're in the building and you have trouble, just come find one of us at the reference desk and we will help you find it. So when you have a film reel and you want to use it at the Library of Michigan, um, we've got uh, 12 new reader printers that are connected to a computer. They sort of look like what you see on the screen image um, on the right hand side, they're, they're view scans. And you can print, there's a print management system connected to it so that you can either print um, say 20 cents a page, you can take croppings of an article, an obit, or a section of an article, and you can email it to yourself, or you can save it to a flash drive. So that's a really handy um, equipment that we have here for viewing the film. And there's ways to, to help, you know, focus and zoom um, and change from positive to negative and a few other features on those programs. I want to talk a little bit about indexes. So we do have some indexes in print in the microfilm room itself. So it says here we got the Lansing State Journal from 1988 to 95, uh, which was a Lansing Community College uh, project uh, that students did. Detroit News, 76 to 2010, Grand Rapids Press, and several different others. So if you want to see if there's an index, go to our catalog, search Grand Rapids Press Index, and it will at least should give you a record if we do have one in the results list. You know, some are published by local historical or genealogical societies. Um, some can be on fiche or on film, and then use that answer cat, find locations. And, you know, it's not a, a bad thing to kind of venture out on the internet and see what's out there, what hits. Maybe there is a local library that has done some, um, or use some volunteers to do some indexing of maybe obituaries and things like that. One example that I can provide is uh, the Capital Area District Library was working on a project to index just the obituaries in the State Republican. I'm not certain how far along in this project they are, but they are working on that project. So definitely contact that local public library to see what they are doing. So remember way back when I mentioned things um, for the public. And if you click on for the public, it'll give you a left-hand side menu. Well, the items here on the left-hand side are just some of those items that you're gonna see in that menu. And there's a link for the newspapers that I mentioned to get you to the, those on film uh, and so forth. But also in that link, I wanna mention that get a library card. So at the beginning of the presentation, Adam did post in the chat, a link to that page on the website, or you can go to our website for the public and then click on get a library card. And once you do that and you link on that page, you want to scroll down and you will see the form. So again, if you're a Michigan resident, you can fill out that form, you can click submit, and it will provide you some access to some of the different databases that we have. So online resources for library card holders. There's a couple different ways that you can get to these newspaper resources. Um, but if you go to that for the public, there's online resources for library card holders. And there's a bunch of different newspapers there. These are just a few of them that I want to just mention here on, on the page, like the free press. There's newspaper archives, newspapers.com. We have a subscription to them. The Michigan Chronicle, Grand Rapids Press, Detroit News, and a few others. And they each have different years that they cover. And in the demo, I'll show you those listings. So this is Newspaper Archive, one the database. And I find this is a very useful database because 
it does focus on some of the smaller cities in Michigan, throughout Michigan. Um, and it's a, just a really, I think, a hidden gem resource. So this is uh, the list of the cities that they do cover, but they are adding to it. So definitely check back every so often. And then once you were to click on a city, you're going to get a second page that will come up. And I, just, I'm using Ironwood as an example. And it'll tell you the papers that they have access to um, in that city. So as we can see here um, below it, there's many different newspapers, but it also tells you that year breakdown. So you can sort of see some of the papers, like that first one, The Advocate, it's only 1891 to 1892. But if we look down a little bit to the Daily Globe, its coverage is 1919 through 2014. So the year coverage um, can vary. Something to keep in mind. As we as I also mentioned before, we do have that wonderful newspapers.com through Ancestry, the World Collection, but we do have the Michigan um, component. So the page that you see on screen, if you haven't used newspapers.com, looks, you know, a lot like this, where you have that search box at the top. So you can then just kind of enter your search terms that you were looking for. Um, but you can also see like all the newspapers in the collection. So if you look below that search box, there's papers in this collection. And on the right, there's that see all button. So you can kind of move into the, to see all the other papers. On the left-hand side, and I can't really show you all of the screen here on this, this slide, this is just a snapshot. There's a couple different menus to, to do some limiting and, and some filtering in newspapers.com. So you got the date range that you can change and use. You can learn how to search and some other videos that you can, uh, they can help you search here. But if I scroll down a little bit and on the left-hand side, some of those menus again, I can use the map, the location, US, and you can click on Michigan to get the Michigan papers like I did in front of you. Uh, on the left-hand side below the map is, you can type in the state and then you can get to the listing of the Michigan papers. So what we see in front of us are those Michigan papers and there's 67 papers, Advocate, Alma, Argus, so on and so forth. And then below it, it gives you the date of coverage and the amount of pages so that when you click on that paper, like the Bessemer Herald and so forth, you can then search within that paper or you can use the uh, date sliders to, to alter the date range if need be. Here's a quick example of Detroit Free Press. Um, its coverage is 1831 to 1999. It's a huge paper itself. Um, that's the general search box. When you are searching the Free Press, you're also searching basically 11 titles that make up the Free Press you know, through mergers and acquisitions. So these 11 pub uh, publications, I just have a few listed here um, so that you can see, like the Daily Free Press, 42, or ages basically 1842, the Democratic Free Press, Democratic Free Press, and Michigan Intelligencer, 1831 to 1832. So it's the different papers that make up the Free Press itself. Or you could go into those individual 11 publications and search them individually. This is just a sample result list from Searching Free Press because I want to just point out a few things because all these databases are being brought to us by different vendors. So the look and where buttons are and control features are always a little different. So we see here the, that results list is in the front or in the center, I should say. And then you can click on uh, full text PDF underneath the title itself. Um, or just the abstract and details, or you can click on the title then to get into that particular article that is listed in the results list. On the left-hand side, you have different, or not different, you'll have that slider bar for the dates. So you can move to different decades or then to different months to filter down your search. 
And so I want to point out on the right-hand side top corner, you have a couple different uh, options. You can modify your search. You can save a search, give yourself an alert through this, through this database. But then there is a print button that's in kind of a teal color and a email button. So there's some, something to, to keep in mind. Those types of features, they may not be part of every single newspaper database. And you might have to go around looking for them if you're unfamiliar with that database. So if I were to click on one of those articles in the free press, you know, this particular one, it kind of just gives you a quick snapshot that I clicked on the article, it's that article itself, and it's pulling up that article. You know, it's not pulling up the full paper. Right above this view screen, that's kind of in the center, that, that gives us the actual heading of the article. There's a couple tabs. Right now it says full text PDF. Then you can go right to page view. You can go into details. Or right above it, it says line Detroit Free Press, 1858 to 1922. And at the very end, it says browse this issue. So you can go into that particular newspaper issue and then, you know, read it and kind of turn page by page to see what else is being covered in the paper. Or on the right-hand side menu, as you can see, it says browse this issue. So there are, are, are different ways to do that, at least in the free press and in the other papers. You just need to kind of find how it's laid out in front of you. I want to talk a little bit about some other print sources um, that can be very important, depending on your newspaper research. Um, there's the American Newspaper Directory, uh, 1900, in case you're just trying to get names of newspapers, the same thing with that Michigan Newspaper Directory right below it, 1982 to 2015. If you're interested in more genealogical column directory in newspapers, uh, there's that title there that's located at the archives, as well as conducting newspaper research. Uh, that title is also at the archives, which is in the same building that we occupy, just on the other side. So these kind of newspaper research uh, volumes, depending on what you're doing, what you're researching, could be helpful if you're looking for newspaper titles. Something else to keep in mind if you're kind of looking for newspaper titles, you can look at our newspaper holdings. But also, definitely check out um, county histories if that's kind of the time frame you're looking for, like the late 1800s. Because a lot of the county histories, they will start hopefully talking about different newspapers being published, as well as the Michigan State Gazetteer. We don't have a full run, but roughly mid 1860s to about 9, 1931 is what we have in print form. And they're alphabetical by, by place, and they will usually give a brief synopsis or summary of that location, that city. And hopefully they will talk about, many of them do, talk about the papers that are being published. And that's another good way to find newspaper titles if you're not quite certain and you've kind of browsed the catalog and you've browsed the newspaper holdings and still need a little extra help. So why newspapers? Why do you want to use newspapers? Well, you know, we've got things like gossip columns, vital records, news stories, le uh, legal articles, notices, political stories, ads. So we want, we, want, we want to really think of newspapers as the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram of that age. This is how people communicated information to each other. So that when we talk about marriages, you know, a person who was were the persons who were granted a license, you know, maybe accompanied by a photograph of the bride or groom, maybe even a list of relatives or attendants. So if you're finding birth announcements in papers, maybe the name of the parent, uh, the name of the child, occasionally even what hospital uh, the infant was born at. If we're talking about death notices, you know, hopefully a date, maybe even a cause of death and burial place and or a service location. Um, maybe even more details in the actual obituary, like perhaps a biographical background or a sketch, maybe some brief history, work highlights, cause of death, and maybe other pieces of information. 
So when you're looking for um, art, uh, articles like on birth or marriage, death, divorce, obituaries, things like this, um, when looking at a newspaper, you know, that exact date is best, but a month and year helps you narrow the search, whether you're searching online or you're spinning the microfilm itself. Another good point to, to keep in mind is look at the first page of the newspaper. Is there a table of contents? Some papers do and some papers don't. Um, provide that information to help you kind of quickly navigate to that section or that page. Um, death notice may may be something to keep in mind and may of you many of you may have already may already know this may be the only event listed you know there may not be a an obituary that might be the only item it's just that brief uh death notice some other ideas to keep in mind with newspaper research again you know mentioning that table of contents you know that newspaper design is there a familiarity with a newspaper i can always you know tell when i'm you know reading this newspaper or that newspaper, these are where items like obituaries or notices, gossip columns and all this, these are located. Um, think about the village or town newspapers because there is different coverage in different newspapers. And think about counties and cities and states. Um, so if we're thinking about that example I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the presentation of, oh, with the free press and the state and not the state, uh, Detroit News, there were those strikes. So there are those, there weren't any newspapers being published. Well, I mentioned that because I actually worked with a researcher who was looking for an obituary that fell in one of those times. And this person she was looking for died in Detroit during a strike. There's no open either paper. Well, what other paper could have information if the family decided to put something in a paper. You know, did they grow up in a different city, different town, check that newspaper. During the course of your research, did they spend a larger chunk of their life in a different town? Maybe they were born in Jackson, spent only five or six years, but then spent a majority of the time, let's say in, in Lansing or in Flint, and then moved to Detroit and then died in Detroit. Well, if they spend a, a vast majority of time in, say, Flint, look at that newspaper. Or in your, your research of this family, if you notice there is a predominantly, most of the family is in a different town, maybe Grand Rapids or Marquette, checking that newspaper. Because maybe the family connections rely, or I should say, are in that different city. So just things to keep in mind. And as I also mentioned before, you know, newspapers are the Facebook. This is how they are communicating information. So not just thinking about vital records, birth, marriage, and death um, notices, and so forth, but the person that you're researching, were they involved in local organizations? Would they have commented in an editorial or some type of opinion piece about a topic of the time where they would have wrote into the editor? Um, would they have information in those gossip columns of John and Jane passing through or visiting relatives? You know, it, there's a lot of good primary source content information that'll help you kind of create your story. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unshare this screen and then I'm going to share the screen to, to, to get to our website so I can show you some of these uh, things that I've been talking about. So we're going to do a new share. So bear with me, everyone. Oh, so hopefully the screen did not go to where I want it to, but we can see the ProQuest page right now. Okay. I want to go here just to, now we should see the um, search I did here just for Library of Michigan so I can get to our website, Library of Michigan. And remember at the beginning, I mentioned that for the public. So it's right here for the public toward the top center. I'm going to click on that. And I mentioned before, there's that menu we got here. 
the first thing I want to point out is that get that library card. I'm going to click on that link. And as I said before, we want to scroll down because when we scroll down, there is that wonderful form. You can fill out if you're a Michigan resident. And you can click submit. And then in about, you know, three, four business days, we'll send you that digital library card that will provide access to a fair amount of newspapers in Michigan. So I'm going to click on the back button. And once again, I'm going to click on for the public to get that menu. Point out the there's the Library of Michigan newspapers link that I mentioned. I'm going to click on that so that you can see that last choice, newspapers on microfilm at LM. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that just to show it. There's that big county listing. So if I click on Jackson, just randomly clicking on a different. Now we can see Brooklyn, Concord, Han uh, Hanover, Horton, and there are those years that I mentioned before. So we do have a lot of coverage in many different counties. And then if we look at the Jackson Citiz Citizen Patriot here, there's that 1919 through 9999. Again, it's a current subscription that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up to the top. I'm going to click on For the Public to get to the menu. And then online resources for library card holders. This is probably the best way. And as I said, I think uh, Adam put, put, uh, put this link in the chat box earlier in the presentation. I'm going to click on it. And then we scroll down. So there's some different newspaper resources that you have access to. So the first one I just want to mention, America's News, Historical and Current, uh, current through Newsbank. It's a collection of different Michigan newspapers through Newsbank, including, this is why I want to mention it, some of the MLive publications. So MLive's, MLive group has been kind of buying out a lot of newspapers. So that's one newspaper um, database you can access. The Ann Arbor News Historical. You can see here below it, it's 1923 to the current date. We have Bay City Times, 1889. We go down, there's Detroit Free Press Historical, Detroit News, Ethnic News Watch, keep going down, Globe and Mail Historical over there in Canada, which we have this because there's a lot of, you know, immigration, migration, movement of peoples, Grand Rapids, Heritage Hub. This is a product through Newsbank. You know, it says here, Premier collection of U.S. obituaries and death notices, um, and some in-depth biographical genealogical research from 1824 through the present. And yes, it does say all 50 states, um, but it's not all from 1824 to today. It really depended on what News Bank was able to negotiate um, with those owners of those papers. So each individual paper that you go to might have a different date of coverage. So just kind of keep that in mind when you go into there. Chronicle, Gazette, there's that newspaper archive, and then newspapers.com, Saginaw News, and then the Sioux. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one. I think it's, um, I've been kicked out, so I might have to re-enter my information. I'm going to go ahead and let's try. Well, let's go up to Grand Rapids. We're, we're going to try Grand Rapids. Press. And we please wait while we transfer you. Thinking. Hopefully. There we go. So I logged in before we started. Once you have your, once you have your library card, you will set up your own password. And there will be instructions on how to do that. So once you click on that link, Grand Rapids Press or Detroit Free Press or Ann Arbor News, you're going to get to a page when you'll have to type your library card number and that password you set up. And once you do that and you click, I think it would be OK or submit, you'll then be pushed onto the database itself. So in Grand Rapids, I wanted to uh, point this one out because each newspaper itself that we have a, a subscription to 
the coverage can be different. So when we look here, Grand Rapids Press, we have four sources. We have the press, gives us the dates 1893 to 2000. And then it's also broken down to the press, 2000 to current, Grand Rapids Press, 2018 to current, and then Grand Rapids Press, the web edition articles. So some of those databases might have different groupings of the newspaper, but it's got a search box. So I just want to just do some quick demonstration. Let's see if they have anything on us. Library of Michigan. I've never done this search in Grand Rapids Press, so we'll see if we have something. So it's telling us it's searching for all these words. And towards the top, we've got 189,728. So it's looking for the Library of Michigan. I'm just going to put it in quotes because it's always important to kind of discover what special characters or options, features that the database will let you do. You know, whether it's an advanced search, the bottom, or quotes and so forth. So I'm going to put it in quotes and see if it recognizes that specific phrase. I encountered an error. Please try again later. Whoops. So let's not do that and go back. So I'm just going to use advanced search instead. It says here we can do all text. I'm just going to do lead and first paragraph. So we have different options, page, source, dates, word count, and so forth. Try it again. Did we get anything? Two hundred and fifty results. Historian wins Michigan Author Award. Well, this just you know just occurred earlier this year. Um, Larry Massey was a recipient Michigan Author Award. That's just you know that's what this article is. But then with any any of the databases, you can click on the item to open up the uh, the article itself. For this one, we pay view document. There we go. And this gives us the actual document here, Historian Wins Michigan Author Award. And then you know, it's highlighted the, the key terms. Towards the top is where they have a way to cite, we can change the text size, we can email, print, download. We can save this, we can copy a link. So each database that you might use in um, that uh, list of online resources might have these different options, maybe fewer, maybe more. You know, they might be in the right-hand corner as they were the Detroit Free Press, or they might be you know, at the top, or they might be in other locations. So definitely um, keep in mind when you're using the different ones that you might have to hunt around. Now I've noticed and checked the time that it's 721. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna open up to questions right now um, from you. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the chat right now. And I'm going to turn on my video. So I'm going to go ahead and start an, uh, uh, answering some of these questions. I see quite a few here. Adam's been uh, answering some of these questions already. So if you do have questions, go ahead and, and you can unmute yourself. You can ask or you can type in the chat. I'm just looking here right now. That there was one question earlier, it was just sent directly to me, but I think it is uh, a, a good one to just alert everybody about. Mm -hmm. And that was if uh, newspapers.com can be remotely accessed with a Library of Michigan card. For and, right now. Yes, yeah, that hasn't changed yet. And, mm -hmm. and the response that I put was that um, any database that is listed on that online resources page, which has all those different uh, newspapers one, um and several others that are on there the only one that cannot be remotely accessed anymore mm -hmm. is ancestry.com library edition that got shut down mm -hmm. as of um december of 2021 and that was the decision that was made on proquest part the the vendor mm -hmm. that that provides it so and it's always good to check that um 
that link online resources for library card holders to see any changes. Um, because I don't know when the licensing agreements will come back up, but if any changes need to occur, have to occur, we will put indications in that, you know, brief description, you know, maybe they, you know, extend coverage for whatever, five more years or something. Um, we're going to add that information there. Uh, another way to also kind of know about updates when there are changes to um, any of these databases, especially if we get new ones added, is we'll usually po put something in one of our special collections updates mm -hmm. uh, by week or biweekly uh, email bulletins. Matt, if you can bring up the the library's homepage, and then I think you've got one of the other tabs there. If you just go down to the bottom, scroll down. And then you can see where it says special collections update e bulletin in the middle there. If you just want to hover your mouse over it, right if there. you click on that, that will then um, allow you to put your email address in. And every two weeks, we usually send out an e bulletin that talks about three, three or four topics of things that we're just talking about of what's going on in with the library, whether it's things related to collections or events. Um, our newest one's going to come out either on. Friday or Saturday, I'm the one who's going to finish editing it. <laughs> so it'll depend on when I get it done. Um, but I know one thing that will be listed in there will also uh, highlight the upcoming programs for 2023. And then when we do um, have anything on there about um, changes to databases, that, that sort of thing is on there. Sorry that the page is not coming up. I'm still trying to load for that. Um... You that the internet news, I know I did. I don't know why the I don't know why the bulletin's not working. Um, I apologize. But yeah, if anybody has any other questions about what there we oh, go, there he is. Okay, yep. And you just put the, your email address in, and then hit next, and then it goes mm -hmm. right to it. So, but if you have any other questions about what Matt talked about or anything related to the services of the Library of Michigan, mm -hmm. um, now's your chance. You got two librarians that both yep. work there, and. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't full, play an hour of Stump the Librarian, but we've got a few minutes so we can do so. Yeah, <laughs> and and we are we, we do look for other newspaper databases so that we can in, inquire about pricing and things. Um, hours for the library, uh, Monday through Friday, 10 until 5, Saturdays, 10 until 4, except for state and federal holidays. Yeah, newspapers are, are always fun, but they're always challenging because you know, all the different databases are different. And for a good example, we have a volunteer who came in who was looking for a, a OBIT. Um, and, you know, the it's the layout of the paper was very challenging because as many of you may have known, looking for OBITs and death notices for the earlier papers, there's no section. They're just somewhere where they where they had room. So those are, it, it can be, can be challenging. Yes, there's parking, Karen. Um, there is a lot in front of in front of our building, which is on the south side of the building. If you're unfamiliar with Lansing, uh, the building itself is at 702 West Kalamazoo Street. And that guest parking, it's a $5 flat fee, um, unless the gate is open. If the gate is open, you just drive right through. Um, Saturdays, the gate should be open. So you can drive right through and park. I just put the uh, okay. directions and our listings and mm -hmm. towards the bottom of it, there is the, what's listed as the days closed in 2022. We will be updating that soon once it turns into the new year. So um, that will be made available on there. Yeah. And just as a side, uh, a side comment to the, you know, the parking nearby and the hours, um, part of our building does house on the east side, the state museum. And we do get a lot of third and fourth grade graders visiting for like Michigan history. So you might see, you might have to wade through a, a sea of young children, just to, just to let you know. Don't be scared by us. the, by the yeah. many kids eating lunch or yeah. running around. Once, once you get to the library, it's a little, right. a little bit more quiet. Yep. It can be fun. You get this, the sea of masses and, and, and the various buses and, and whatnot, but. But yeah, and, I mean, if anybody has any other questions, you can also unmute yourself if you want to. Um, I will point out uh, during this downtime, I briefly mentioned it before with 
you know, looking at local public libraries for like indexing and, and things of that nature, but also contacting those local public libraries that cover the city where that newspaper that you have a research interest. Um, because, you know, we, we simply don't know what that local public library is doing. You know, they may have volunteer efforts. They may be digitizing things. You know, a great example is the Dexter District Library does have a partnership with the Dexter Leader, uh, that local newspaper, um, for digitization. I don't know what that relationship is. I know that digi a digitization project is ongoing. The last I knew, it was internal access only by staff. I don't know if that has changed in the recent uh, past. But again, you know, contacting that local library, see what they're doing, because they are also doing a lot of good work out there. And there's a question about the video recording. So when, um, when we're done uh, with the feed for, for uh, this evening, um, once I hit end, it will take probably about an hour or so for Facebook to make it available on there on, on the library's Facebook page. And then the, re the recording of it that we will have through our website, um, that typically takes about a week or so because for putting it on YouTube, we're required to get a caption and a few other different things um, done to it. Um, but you can go and find it. I'll put the link mm -hmm. on whoops uh in the chat uh it's under the uh, video tutorials page it will be right here Let's see as far as food um there are some vending machines that are in the library itself um mm -hmm. but as far as anything beyond that you, you have to kind of walk about the half mile into downtown lansing itself where there's a variety of different things everything mm -hmm. from jimmy john's to uh zoop uh grand, Tra grand Tra Tra company recently opened up um a new restaurant called veg head which was pretty mm -hmm. good we were actually matt and i were there just yes. earlier this week mm -hmm. um so there's a bunch of options there um there's also a new well not really new but a, a relatively new grand uh, um bridge street style market uh where it's called um if you're familiar with grand rapids there was a mire that was put down there and now there's one that's in downtown Lansing across from the uh, uh, where the lug nuts play baseball, um, just on the other side of downtown. So a few options, you just have yep. to walk or potentially drive a short drive. distance. Mm -hmm. So um, one other thing I'll mention too that I think is kind of an echo of what you said earlier, Matt, is that there are other libraries that I know are, are doing some of these small projects. And I know like mm -hmm. Munising, I think has all of their local paper digitized. They just mm -hmm. don't have it available mm -hmm. on a platform yes. yet. And that they're still working through some of the kinks with that. Yeah, and Presque Hill's the same way. They have yeah. their paper, but it's ac accessible only internally on yep. one computer. So yep. it's it really is a box of chocolates. We we just don't know. Yeah. Why we, I know, we don't encourage uh, you to talk to each individual local library. Yeah. Like Western Michigan Genealogical Society has got a really great page. Mm. I'll put in the chat for their different um, mm. indexes that they've done. I, mean, I should also say we're always on the lookout if anybody has done a recent index project, if it's mm -hmm. in a print form. Yes. Um, yes. Because we want to make sure that we get copies of those yep. types of things. As Matt so always says, two copies. Yep, two Probably. copies. Yep. yep. Add to the collection. We want a legacy copy and then that copy that can be checked out uh, for, for researchers. Because if you get a physical library card, you actually come to the building and you get a physical library card with us. If we have our second copy of items, you can check that second copy out. Any other questions? Uh, oh, I see another one. I'm out of state. Do you work with libraries from other states. Uh, Matt, you can probably talk a little bit more about what we're able to do for interlibrary loan than what I can. I know it's kind of limited. Yeah, right we now. don't. Um, if, if the question is, do we interli interlibrary loan microfilm copies of our newspapers? The answer is no. There are situations where we will loan the paper to a Michigan library if the institution has contacted us. 
Um, if the question is, I have this article, you know, or death notice, um, this obituary, this opinion piece, and I know it's in the Lansing State Journal, or it's in um, the Advocate, you know, up in Ironwood, or it's in the Grand Rapids Press, you can email us, you know, librarian at michigan.gov with, hello, my name is Jane, I'm looking for this article, this is the small date range, you know, roughly five to eight, uh, eight days, we can look for something like that. But once it gets more, closer to 10 day date range or more, the amount of questions that we have to answer, we don't have the staff to do that kind of in-depth research. And that's when we would direct you to, to, if you're out of state or too far to drive to come to us to do the research, to, to hire a researcher. And we have a, a listing um, of, of like the MGC societies and some researchers who will come to us to do work. I just put the link for that in the chat. Thank you. Yep. Do out-of-state residents have access to your online collections? If not, how could we? Um, unfortunately, most of our stuff is just uh, internally with within um, for Michigan residents. There are some things that like that are on like LM Digital, which is one of mm -hmm. our um, digitization platforms um, where we are doing some scanning and working with a few other libraries and institutions. I'll put the link for that on there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a bit more of a, a select scanning yes. process. Mm -hmm. um, but right now it's 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 just for Michigan residents, other than like when Matt said, you know, if you contact us and say, hey, can you look for this a bit for me? Um, can mm. you see if you have a, can make a scan of a couple pages out of a book yeah. for me? Something like that. Um, fortunately, when you've only got about 10 people in special collections and one of them is, or two of them are law librarians and mm. one or two of them are focused on state employees and then the rest of us are, are doing a hodgepodge of this this type of projects yeah. and yeah it's it's selecting it's, books for purchase and this and yes well we're many hats like yes, yeah, yes listed we off as uh the cv at the beginning here we, mm -hmm. we we have a lot of that that building like, shelves yep all kinds but of we do things. talk with other state libraries mm -hmm. i mean if if somebody is looking for something we we will we'll certainly direct um mm -hmm. people to to the, the one that we think is the most applicable to their research. Um, one thing that you can look for too, and I'll, I'll bring it up here in a second, is there is a directory of all the state libraries that is through the uh, COSLA page, which is the uh, Chief Officers, hold on, uh, Officers of State, uh, state Library Agencies, I think that's what it stands for. Um, here a second. Yes, COSLA. So here's the COSLA page. And I know there is a directory on here. Yep, click here to view the directory. This directory <coughs> link itself. Um, oops, that to go here. Here. Can you put um, the link here? Okay. Yep, just put it in. Um, yep. So, Matt, if you bring that up, you can show where it has a list to all the different state libraries across across uh, the United States. Um, yep, let me click on it. Sorry about that. I had a little coughing fit. Well, click on where it says the home page and then scroll down to the bottom. And I click here to view COSLA's member directory. There we go. Yep. So then it shows who the names of the state librarians are, the links to their website. Just keep in mind that not every state library is going to function exactly like we do. So, for example, if you're looking at the state of Wisconsin, um, it's not the state library that does a lot of that type of uh, collection type of thing that we do. It's their, uh, the Wisconsin State Historical Society 
is who does the uh, primary collecting and servicing of that that type of information. But you know, the state of Indiana is a little bit closer to how we do things. Mm-hmm. Um, state of Virginia, um, variety of them out there. Um, different. It can just vary from state to state. So let's double check. Do we get all the questions? I think so. Um, any upcoming genealogy webinars? I uh, just want to remind everybody that the 2023 schedule is now up on our website that you can start registering for. I'm going to just put the whole link here. Um, and so if you scroll past the 2022 schedule tomorrow, when I get to work, I'm going to delete all of that off of there. So it's just the 2023 schedule and that we are doing all virtual for all 12 months um, in 2023 instead of every other month. Um, some will be repeats, some will be some new flavors. Um, so anything from Neapolitan to Superman ice cream, we're going to bring a few of those mm-hmm. out of other different topics that we haven't presented on. Um, I know there was a question about, is there a handout for today's session? Uh, there isn't, but we will uh, have recordings of everything that we've talked about this evening. Mm-hmm available. And if you have any other questions that we didn't get to, you can always email us at librarian at michigan.gov. Yeah. And I'll put that in the chat. Yeah. And just to just to reiterate for the, those questions about the recording, it takes about, you know, one to two weeks for the closed captioning, the editing and all that process to be done. Yep. And then for uh, the process to then upload it to the YouTube channel. Into the chat. I'm not seeing any others. Yeah, uh, Harold, I do see your hands raised. Is that a got got, got another question for I, us? I was clapping. Ah, oh, clapping. Okay. Well, thank oh, you. I I apologize. I That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, guys. Really. Well, thank you. Yeah, yes. you're welcome. Well, if nobody has any other yeah. questions, uh, thank you everybody for joining. Yeah, thank us. you. If, thank you very much. Uh, if, uh, if you've come to visit these multiple times, um, we're glad that you spent uh, a few of your nights of 2022 with us. And if you're somebody new, we hope to see you again in 2023. Come visit us at the library. And if yeah. you're, you're out of states, we'll see you online in the new year. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and shut things down. And Have a good evening. Yep.